Hello and welcome to another episode of GearTactics.com. I'm your host Justin Lee, and this time we are checking out a Kangaroo Mini PC by InFocus. Yes, the projector company. Uh, it's $99 US and $149 Canadian. Sometimes you can get it on sale for $130 Canadian. So on the back of the box, we have the specifications for this mini PC. Uh, oh, I'm just gonna focus it here. Hang on. All right, it's got Windows 10 64-bit Home Edition, a 1.44 gigahertz Atom X5 Z8500 processor. This is a new Cherry Trail processor uh, with a faster GPU. It's got Bluetooth. Uh, you use that for audio, USB, HDMI. Doesn't have a headphone jack. Two gigs of RAM. You can't upgrade that. Nope. Uh, internal storage, 32 gigs, a micro SD card slot. It's got a fingerprint reader, one USB 2, one USB 3. And uh, on the side here, we got Microsoft, Intel, yep. Let's open it up. Yeah, I gotta love that sound. Alright, a little manual in here. Let's see what we got in here, yep. Uh, there's a removable dock, as you can see. Uh, they'll be coming out with other docks in the future. The AC adapter. Oh, nothing there. And here are all the ports. Yeah, see, you got the micro USB. That's for charging. There's an internal battery. There's a micro SD card. So you can increase the storage. Yeah, pretty cool. This pictures are from the dock. It's uh, proprietary, that connector there. Oh, well. QR code for the manual. Let's check this baby out. Alright. Nice aluminum finish here. Cute little kangaroo logo here. And there's a LED power. It shows you it's on. Here we have some vent. Micro USB for charging the internal battery. And the micro SD card. Another vent. It's got passive cooling. Action switch. This little switch creates a hot spot so you can remote to it like a VNC. Yeah, so you flick this, it turns blue, and you get a hot spot. The fingerprint reader and a power switch. Oh, what's that? Another little vent here. Alright. Not much else on the back. Let's pull off this dock here. Oh, it's a fingerprint magnet. Yeah, proprietary dock. They will be selling some other docks that can go in here. So here, this dock comes with HDMI, USB 3, USB 2, and of course the power connector. Yep. Nice and snug. Let's see what's in the bottom of this thing. I'm guessing it's the AC adapter. Sure, let's put a hole in here. Pull this box out. Oh. It's, oh. <laughs> it opens on the side, okay. Alright. Looks like a laptop plug. Out of here. Uh, no, that's a ventilation hole. Oh, oh, oh. oh, there it is. I'm guessing the other box has the actual power cord. There it is. So, I'm going to hook this up to my HDTV and I'll be right back. Okay, so here it is booting up. As you can see, it boots pretty fast. After all, it does have a 32 gig SSD in there. And here we have Windows 10 Home. Just going to log in here. I'm doing a direct screen capture. Right now it's running at... Uh, 1920 times 1080. Nice big res. The bottom right, you saw that OS links. That's how you hook up your iPad using a wire uh, to control it. You turn your iPad into a Windows 10 display. 
Yeah, let's uh, go to gear tactics and uh, see how fast it loads. The site has lots of YouTube videos. So the plugins should slow this down for a second here. Let's see, there's, there's a bunch of previous reviews here. Let's see, it's all loaded. I've uh, muted the audio because I don't want to hear myself over my own review. It's going to full screen this and. It's got to change it to uh, 1080p here. So, yeah, this thing has no problems playing 1080p videos. You just got to uh, either put them on the SD card or use the Wi Fi. Uh, some people said there were some Wi Fi issues streaming. There is a new uh, Wi Fi driver, helps a bit. This has a built in N, so that's pretty, uh, pretty zippy. No wired Ethernet, so hopefully they'll come out with a dock with that the gigabit ethernet. You see, surfing is fine on this little box. So is Netflix. Uh, I'm just going to close this here. So what I'm going to do next here is a little bit of PC gaming. I definitely wouldn't try, say, playing the latest Call of Duty on this. <laughs> there isn't even enough RAM in this. So I'm just gonna, I downloaded uh, Trackmania uh, Forever here. Just gonna start the installer here. So I'm not gonna uh, let you guys endure watching this entire installation, so <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, speed it up by quite a bit. Uh, needless to say, it took about uh, five minutes to install. Not, not too shabby. Now, there is a bit of throttling if when it starts overheating. Uh, if you throw a laptop fan underneath it, it, it should be fine. But uh, if you try to run really intensive games on it, it will throttle it and slow it down. You're going to notice it. But if you play like light stuff like this, uh, Trackmania, uh, if you do a little bit of a, a classic emulation, it should not throttle. But uh, yeah, that's what happens when you have passive cooling. So throw a little laptop cooler, those little fans underneath it, that, that, that should help it out. But as you can see, uh, as soon as we start this game, it does play fairly well. Obviously, if you do just office and uh, surfing, there is no problem with that whatsoever. Oh, well, as you can see, you see it's running just fine. It rarely drops any frames in this game, so this is definitely a fun game to play. Minecraft also works, uh, about 25 frames a second. And off we go. As you can see, it's running pretty smooth. No problems. Um, uh, no real drop frames, no obvious yet. I should have hooked up a Bluetooth uh, controller to this because playing with a keyboard was not exactly easy. And that's why you shouldn't talk and play at the same time. Oh, let's let the replay run for a little bit. Okay. Quite smooth for some light gaming. So what about some classic gaming here? Look at uh, MAME. 
UI 64 bit installed here. And I'm going to try out uh, Tekken 3. That's one of the most intensive MAME games out there. If it can run this, it can run almost any MAME game. I probably could tweak this a bit. Oh, right now it's running at 640 times 480. That's the original resolution. Good morning. Well, as you can see, it's dropping frames, and the sound doesn't sound good, so it's... Yeah, that doesn't sound normal. So, I don't think this is gonna work. Yeah, it's running in slow motion! The sound is skipping and stuttering. Yeah, this game is pretty unplayable at this at this speed, so a little too intense for this uh, kangaroo PC. But of course, uh, Tekken 3 is pretty pretty hefty, <laughs> so uh, I'm not surprised. Let's try something else here. I'm gonna try uh, NBA Jam Tournament Edition, one of my favorite arcade games. I uh, spent hundreds of dollars on that. <coughs> Let's not mention that. Yeah, <laughs> it was very addictive. I got to say that. All right, so I loaded up with credits. No time. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother keeping records here. Okay, let's try the good old mix. Mix. So we'll see how this meme game runs. It probably does run pretty well. Not too intensive, but uh, does have enough uh, going on on the screen. Here's the tip. Yep, oh, running pretty good. Cool. All right, uh, we've already gotten the three on me. What is this? Come on. Alright, take a shot here. Come on, Ewing! Duh! What? What is... Ugh. Take that! Well, as you can see... <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Getting a little angry at the opposing team here. Uh, yes! Made it. Uh, NBA Jam Tournament Edition runs perfectly fine. So, what we're gonna do next here is... Yes, it's Nintendo 64 emulation. This is uh, Project 64. As you can see, I'm leaving it in the original resolution. Uh, full screen to see how it runs so far. It's running perfectly fine. Hmm. I guess I shouldn't have used a keyboard. To, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing alright. As you can see, there's not a single drop frame. And it's doing pretty good. Could you imagine if you threw an SD card, micro SD card, in this uh, thing, and you loaded all your favorite N64 games on this? And carry it around with you. you know, when you go to the cottage, for example, hook it up to the HD TV, and bam! You've got a nice emulator. Of course, you can also do work on it, but let's, let's put this in windowed mode. Should actually make it a little more taxing. But, uh, it's still running fine. Yeah, I'm a little rusty. But the Star Force 64, as you can see, it's holding up well. So now, I'm, I'm what I'm gonna try, uh, <coughs> in a second, if someone would stop shooting at me in the back here. is I'm going to uh, 
put it into full screen, and I'm going to up the res to uh, 1920 times 1080 here. So, be right back. And there it is. Looks pretty good. Upscaled, actually, very nice. And it's not hiccuping it at all. Look at that. I'm actually quite impressed. I guess the uh, Cherry Trail CPU certainly uh, adds a kick to the graphics processor compared to the uh, old Bay Trail processors. How do you throw a beam at me? So, that was pretty good. So up next, I'm going to show you the uh, little action switch on the side there. See, it creates a hot spot. Once you flick the switch, click the little blue icon on the bottom there, and voila! Anywhere AP, and there is the password for the hotspot. So it's going to grab a tablet here. You can use anything. You can use a Windows tablet. You can use your phone. You can use anything. There's the hotspot. It's going to connect to it. And the password was A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, I believe. Here we go. Let's go. So now I'm connecting to the little kangaroo PC hotspot. Hey, I'm now connected to it. So now, I can use VNC. Um, if you install Windows 10 Professional, you can use Remote Desktop. That's a little better than VNC. I've already set up a little profile here, so you guys don't have to watch me do that. Type in your local password. So, uh, I'll be right back. I'll show you that. And then hit OK. It should connect. And there you go. See, I'm connected. I'm not controlling the mouse. You have to drag the mouse around. Kind of like as if it was a real mouse, because it's not It's not in touchscreen mode. VNC, did, I don't think they have that. That's why I suggest using remote Microsoft Remote Desktop, but you'll need Windows 10 Pro. This only comes with Home. That way you can be a real touchscreen. See, now it's kind of annoying. I'm dragging a mouse around like a real mouse. See, I'm launching one note. I am controlling it on a tablet to the Kangaroo PC. Don't forget, it has a battery, so if you're in a bus, you're in the train, you can remote to your Kangaroo PC on your phone using VNC, or you can use a tablet. Other cool things, speaking of traveling, is the Kangaroo Dock. It's an extra dock you can buy, so you can leave one dock in your TV at home and one in your office. Same dock. HDMI, USB 3, USB 2, and the power. Of course, there should be an extra power cord in the bottom here. And, oops. AC adapter and cord. See, so now you can leave one dock in your TV set and leave another one at work. So, see, this is under my TV. Take it out, leave all the cords there, get to work, plug it into the second dock, and I don't have to unplug any wires. Is that cool or what? Definitely worth it checking out the second dock. So overall, I like this Kangaroo Mini PC. I just wish it didn't overheat. Uh, that's only one issue. Just throw a CPU laptop fan underneath that has a little fans on it and you'll be good. But if you do normal stuff, it's a great buy. Follow us at twitter.com slash gear tactics. We go on Facebook, facebook.com slash gear tactics. Of course, there are more video reviews up at gear tactics.com. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.